Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we're going to go over the basic interface of Flash. So the concepts we're going to talk about are the different file types supported by Flash, as well as some of the basic interface elements. Um, I'm recording this video using Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6. So let's get into this. Um, I already have Flash open here. Now when Flash first opens up, it's going to give you this sort of what do you want to do today menu, sort of a starting menu. Um, in this middle column, you have a create new option. These are all the different file types you can work with inside of Flash. Now the first one is the one we're going to work with, this ActionScript 3.0 file type. ActionScript is the programming language that is supported inside of Flash. Um, and the latest version is 3.0. So any sort of animation or interactivity that you want Flash to perform is run by ActionScript. So from this point forward, whenever I say open a Flash file, what I'm actually saying is open an ActionScript 3.0 Flash file. Um, they still have older versions of ActionScript supported, so version 2.0. Um, they have Air, which is their development platform, so you'll notice you can develop for the Android platform if you want to sell something on the Droid market. You can develop for the iOS, so if you want to create iPhone or iPad applications, you can do that through Flash. Some of these other file types, I'm, I'm really not going to get into them. They're really uh, scripting and programming file types, so if you're really into knocking out code inside of Flash, these are the file types you would work with, um, but that's a pretty advanced topic beyond the scope of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a Flash ActionScript 3.0 file. Now let's take a look at the interface elements. So you'll notice the interface is broken down into several different panels. There's one here, there's one down at the bottom, several on the side here. Um, each of these panels serves a different function. So this main panel that takes up about 80% of your screen, this is what's called the stage. So this is your main movie. This is what your audience is going to see. This white box is the actual visible stage. White's just the default background color. And this gray area is sort of off stage. Now you can use both, just like if you think of a, a theater performance, you might have actors and actresses standing off stage waiting for their cue to perform. Then they would walk out on stage, do their performance, and when they're done, they might walk off stage so that the next actor or actress can do their part. Um, you can do the same thing in your movies. You might have an image that starts off stage and might drive across the stage if it was a car or a vehicle, um, and then drive off the other side. Um, so don't be afraid to literally think outside the box. You don't have to put everything on the stage. Some assets can be off stage until you need them later in your uh, animations. Um, the next panel we'll look at is the timeline. So here's your timeline down here at the bottom. It's broken down into frames for animation. Now again, uh, I have a whole video on animation. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining the timeline panel, uh, but this is how to control time across your animations or across your uh, project, your movie. And also notice that your timeline's broken down into layers. So just like Photoshop, you can organize your visual assets into layers and sort them into foreground and background by swapping the order in the layer stack. And I'll show that again in a later video. Over on the right side here, we have a couple vertical panels. So this is what's called the, like a quick launch panel. Um, these are several panels of features that are nice to use, but they're not common features. Not everybody's going to use these. So they kind of put them hidden in this little quick launch. Uh, for example, this is the color palette um, and the swatches. Um, so you can access those quick and easy through the quick launch panel if you need to access those. As you use Flash more, um, you'll become more familiar with what panels are available and you'll be able to access them through that quick launch panel. Um, this panel right here is what's called the Property Inspector. Now what the Property Inspector does is it will show you the properties of whatever element you're inspecting inside of Flash. Now right now I don't have anything on the stage, so what it's showing me is just properties of the document as a whole. As my entire Flash movie is a document, it's telling me the properties are. So here um, it's telling me what Flash player version it's using. In this case it's 11.2. Um, here it's telling me what ActionScript version, so ActionScript 3.0, just like the file type we opened. And down here some other properties. So here's frames per second, FPS. Um, by default, 24 frames per second. We can increase and decrease that as we see fit, um, but that's the default setting. You also have the size, so 550 by 400, that's the actual stage size, that's 550 wide by 400 tall. 
as well as the stage background color. Um, so all of the properties of whatever you have selected can be manipulated through the property inspector. And I'll have a whole video on that later. Um, next to that is a tab, and you'll find many panels have more than one tab, so I'm going to click on that. This is the library. The library is where you're going to store all of your assets for your project. So for example, images, sounds, text, video, anything you might be using on the stage or in the timeline can be stored here. So as you import assets, I don't have any because this is a brand new file, your assets will appear in a list here. And this is a little preview window up here that you can view your assets. So if you're not sure what each image looks like, it'll give you a little thumbnail up here to look at. Or if it sounds you're working with, it'll give you the waveform as well as a little play button so you can hear the sound before you use it in your project. So that's the property inspector and the library. The last panel is what's called your toolbar. So you'll notice these are all tools that you may have seen in other Adobe software. So for example, Photoshop or Illustrator, if you're familiar with one of those, many of these tools will look very familiar to you and they function pretty much the same way. Um, obviously there's a lot of tools here. I don't have time to go through all of them. Just be aware of where the toolbar is and I'll have a video for most of the tools you're going to need for this course um, as separate videos. And the last part of the interface you need to know about is the menu bar at the top. So this is just all the menu features supported by Flash. Um, again, a whole nother video is going to be needed to go through all of these options because there's a lot of stuff up here. So that concludes this video. Hopefully uh, you have a sense of the different file types suppo supported by Flash. We're going to be using the Flash ActionScript 3.0 file type from here on out. Um, as well as several of the different interface elements that you're going to see when you're working with Flash. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.